The best part of Beef Wellington is the puff pastry, but there's never enough. We could change that. First, to get started, you want mushrooms. I have a variety of baby bellas, some shiitakes. We're gonna remove that stem, that little woody stem. You wanna discard that. You could use that for a vegetable stock. I also have some oyster mushrooms. We're making a duxel, which is French. It's a finely minced mushroom mixture, very common for a beef wellington. You just wanna take a heavy duty paper towel and then wipe your mushrooms. So you never wanna submerge the mushrooms in water. Mushrooms are like little sponges. They'll absorb all that water. Then when we go to saute them, they'll be waterlogged and they won't grab on the flavor of the garlic and shallots and whatever it is that you're sauteing with. I like to finely chop it with a chef's knife because I feel like I get better control of the texture. You could do this in a food processor, but I feel like it can tend to be a little bit too mushy and it doesn't really look appealing. So finely chop them with a chef's knife. It's better. That's what you want, like that. and three shallots, sliced. Four garlic cloves, just a little chefy tip. So you wanna take that root end right there and just give it a little nip, give it a whack. The skins will easily remove, just like that. So we need about two tablespoons of thyme. Heat the skillet over medium heat three tablespoons butter, and one tablespoon avocado oil. That's just gonna help the butter not to burn. And then you just wanna melt the butter. Add your mushrooms, your shallots. Add the thyme. Pan's gonna seem a little dry, don't do your worry. What's happening is those beautiful mushrooms are absorbing the butter, they're absorbing the oil, and then they'll release their natural moisture. As much as you feel tempted to add more fat, don't, just wait. Kosher salt, freshly cracked black pepper. So can you see how they're releasing the moisture? That's perfect. We're gonna saute these until they get lightly golden. It'll take about five minutes. This is not a typical duxelle because we would finely chop the shallots and those mushrooms would be more like a paste, but I find it to be absolutely unappealing and visually it doesn't look good. Here we're gonna make little individual beef wellingtons, like little packages. So we can make the texture a little bit bigger, which really looks so much more beautiful. To me, I think it tastes beautiful because visually it looks beautiful. That's perfect. Now we're gonna add the garlic right in there. So you wanna saute the garlic until you can smell it. That's usually your best indicator. Once you smell it, it becomes fragrant. It's good to go. It usually takes about 30 seconds to a minute tops. This is our filling for our beef wellington. And then we're gonna deglaze with two tablespoons of Worcestershire. Worcestershire. That's just gonna give it an umami flavor, that steaky umami flavor. But you wanna reduce it until it's completely dry. If the mixture is still wet and it's not dry, it's going to make our puff pastry soggy. So that's what you want right there. So the mixture is moist, but you don't have a bunch of liquid around the perimeter. Perfect. So you need four eight ounce fillets. These are about two inches thick. I actually broke these down from a tenderloin myself. Look how much I had left over. This is all scraps for a stir fry, burgers, stews, whatever you want. Let me tell you, I saved a ton of money. Another paper towel. Take it out of the refrigerator 30 minutes before, bring it to room temperature because we're gonna sear these. But they have to be nice and dry to get a nice golden crust. Heat the skillet over medium heat. Now season your fillets vigorously with kosher salt. These are thick babies. Diamond crystal kosher salt, and this is not an ad for them. I just love the salt. I feel like I get more control. It's not too salty. And look, you think these are gonna be salty? Nope. They won't, trust me, don't do worry. You wanna wipe your 12 inch skillet, and heat the skillet over medium heat. About two tablespoons avocado oil. Heat the oil until it shimmers. See how it's shimmering, it's good to go. And then add your fillets. Don't touch them, two minutes. Perfecto. That's what you want right there. Two more minutes. 
you want to remove them to a paper towel to rest. So we want to get all that moisture, any residual moisture that from the resting, we want to absorb that. And then here's a little secret chef -y tip, so borzen. And we're going to use about two thirds of it and we're going to place it on top of the duxel when we go to put this inside our little puff pastry packages. It's going to create like, like a little cream sauce. It is loaded with flavor, garlic and herbs. It's so good. Now lightly dust your surface, take your puff pastry, just roll it out. We're going to roll it out to about a quarter inch thick. You want to measure about a seven to eight inch square. Place these back into the freezer for about 15 minutes so they can chill and set. We want it really cold. Make sure you cover the puff pastry too because you don't want it to create a skin. Perfect, has to be super duper duper cold. So you wanna smear some boars in right in the middle. Add a little fresh parsley to the duxel because you're fancy. Take your duxel right in the middle, make a little pile. Create a little platform, park your filet right on top, just like that. Now you just wanna gently pull it up and over. Just stretch it a little bit. If you have to trim it, just trim it up. And then flip it, just like that. them onto parchment or silpat just to make them pretty you just want to gently score across the top so don't cut through the puff pastry one egg right into a bowl give it a whisk and then brush it with a little egg wash all over and remember you want to work quick you want to keep this puff pastry nice and cold the colder the better the more it'll puff not melt you use these cute little heart cutouts just to make it cute, you can. Into a 400 degree oven until it's golden and cooked medium to medium rare, about 20, 25 minutes. Two quart pot, and you're gonna add quarter cup unsalted butter. Melt the butter, medium low heat. Now we need a quarter cup all purpose flour. Once the butter is melted, we're gonna add the flour. We're making the gravy. The texture that you're looking for is wet sand. So it shouldn't be a paste, it shouldn't be clumpy. Just add a little as you go. And then whisk vigorously. That's the texture you want right there, perfecto. Two cloves, minced garlic. So we're gonna saute the garlic. It'll flavor the roux, it'll flavor the gravy. It smells good already. One tablespoon, fresh thyme. That's what you want right there. A deglaze with a quarter cup Madeira. You could also use Marsala. If you've made my chicken Marsala recently and you have that Marsala on hand, you could totally use that. And this is what happens. It tightens up and makes a paste. Don't you worry. We're just gonna absorb that about 10 seconds. And now we're gonna add two cups beef broth. And then quickly whisk, so that way it's nice and smooth. You could also use beef stock. Push your salt, you wanna bring it up to a bubble and then reduce it to a simmer and let it cook 10 minutes. Let the gravy set five minutes to further tighten up. No lumps, that's the garlic. Ooh, baby. Move them to rest on a wire rack so you keep the bottom nice and crispy for about eight minutes. Ooh. Borzen and the Duxel, perfectly cooked. Let's give it a taste. Honk and bite. It's so good. Filet is cooked perfect. You get the creaminess from the Borzen. You get that earthiness from the Duxel. The crispiness from the puff pastry, our ratio is better suited, right? A traditional beef wellington, you just get the ring around your one individual slice from the log. This is certainly something you're gonna make for a special occasion, but make any occasion special because you can. Mm, so good. 
And there you have it, a beef wellington that you can make at home, an individual beef wellington that you can make at home. And why? Because you get more puff pastry. And it's your own little package. It's kind of cute. Crispy, buttery, yeah, more puff pastry. That's the way to go. If you like this video, you learned something, give me a thumbs up, comment in the comment box below. Be sure to subscribe. I do roll out a new homemade made easy recipe video each week. And if you wanna check out more of my other recipes, click this one or this one. I'll meet you over there.